Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh Salam sejahtera, salam mekah di hati I bid to Dr. Kamaruddin bin Haji Abu Hassan And to all people who are watching So, first of all, let me introduce myself My name is Nur Hidayah binti Muhammad Razif And I'm from TSLB2 And my lecturer is Dr. Kamaruddin bin Haji Abu Hassan And this presentation is for the subject EDUP 3013 Let me tell you what is my topic that I'm going to present My topic is the implications of National Philosophy of Education, FPK Philosophy of Teacher Education, FPG And Special Education Philosophy on the Malaysian Education System The title is quite long but I can tell you that this topic is actually not as quite long as the title so let's move on to the first one is the implication of FPK on the Malaysian education system so as you all know the national education philosophy or FPK is an important document for teachers and peoples to study, to understand, to head and to follow closely. And educators, especially teachers, need to realize the aims and aspirations of FPK by having profound uh, understanding on it. And FPK is also the main reference in all education planning and activities since its official proclamation in 1985. So, there are three aspects on the implications of FPK. So, the first one is school culture. So, in school culture, uh, organizations of the schools was to be restructured to create conducive atmosphere. This means when in my own experience, uh, we can see in schools, there are organizations such as principal, head principal, and they are all in a structured form. So the next one is uh, upgrading existing facilities for students to develop their potentials in the aspects of emotional, spiritual, physical, harmonious, and also well-balanced. So, this one is, uh, in schools, we can see, in my own experience, uh, for example, in my school, there is a surau. And when I was in Form 4, uh, there were... Uh, the schools put many icons in the surau so that the students will be more comfortable and also will encourage students to go uh, pray at the surau instead of praying at their dorms. So, and the next one is uh, reorganizing social activities to foster the development of the school culture. And this means this um, activities that are held are believed to inculcate the noble value within students. And the next one is school environment is also altered to encourage the love and uh, the love for knowledge or finally establish learning culture among the students. And the last one is co-curriculum activities also will become uh, an important component in the school curriculum with the aim to develop the emotional and social aspects of the students and also to foster unity among various races through social interaction. So moving on to the second one is uh, the aspect of education reforms. So in education reforms, we... Uh, 
For your information, schools in Malaysia had undergone several stages of reformation on education system. And the reformations are firstly is on the style of administration and leadership in schools which is from uh, autocratic changes to democratic style. What I mean is we can see today in schools, uh, for example, there is the IBG or Persatuan Ibu Bapa and Guru, we call, and the PI, this PIBG is there to so that the parents can be a representative for the students so that they will have the chance to speak out what they wanted to and so that the schools will make what they want true. So the next one is from routine or stereotype service to loving and empathetic type of service. And the next one is technical rationality, which assume that all uh, individuals are equal and homogeneous, routine and static, changes to uh, reflective rationality with different and heterogeneous, unique and dynamic individualities among students. And the fourth one is the strategy of teacher oriented in teaching, uh, in teaching learning activities. Before this, we can see that uh, only the teacher in the classroom that is who walks around, who teaches in the classroom. But today, it already changes to um, the application of student oriented strategy which we can see in this 21st century learning students are encouraged to present in class and to teach their friends so the fifth one is the education program from knowledge base changes to integrated education program which includes the development of spiritual emotional physical social and intellectual aspects. For the third aspect, which is role of teachers, uh, as we know, teachers who are dynamic will always be responsive and adaptable to face education ch changes and challenges from time to time. So as an educator or teacher, the responsibilities of the teachers is to educate students to become useful citizens of the future who should be knowledgeable, possess noble values uh, and able to achieve well-being for personal self and thus contribute for the development and progress of the society and nation. So the next one is to educate students as that they will possess various types of living skills especially in technical and vocational fields as well as to fulfill the aspirations and progress of individuals, society and nation according to the aspirations of FPK. And the third one is to act as agent of change to bring along innovations to fulfill the aspirations of uh, FPK and also progress of people's society and nation. So, moving on to the next one is for school curriculum. There are also changes in the syllabus which should be oriented towards an integrated program and also there are also changes in learning materials with emphasis on the noble values which should be integrated with every subject in the school curriculum. So, in a nutshell, we can conclude that the FPK really gave a, big, a very big impact on the development of the education system that involves the Ministry of Education, the formation of various new concepts in education, co-curriculums, schools, teachers, and not to forget the students. So, FPK is 
an official document which spells out the aspiration of the government. So, the education fraternity needs to play an active role in ensuring the realization of FPK. So, as a result, all educators, which is teachers in this context, have to be aware that their tasks and responsibilities are not only limited and confined only to knowledge and skills delivery. So, moving on to the next one is the implication of FPG or philosophy of teacher education on the Malaysian education system. So, FPG outlines the characteristics of teachers who are needed to fulfill the aspirations of our nation. So, as a result, teachers are regarded as role model. So, the role of teachers, firstly, is to equip themselves with general and specific knowledge in various subjects. So, teachers need to learn about, besides about their own subject, teachers also need to learn about the teaching skills. And teachers also need to follow the teaching learning activities, like what the government has uh, taught the teachers. And the teachers also need to enhance and practice noble values and professional ethics in order to teach the next generation and the teachers also need to carry out their responsibilities and accountability and lastly the teachers also need to make use of the knowledge and skills that they have been taught to acquire including professional skills and moving on to the third one is implication of special education philosophy on the Malaysian education system so the as we know, the special education philosophy is especially for the students with special needs. So, there are five aspects which uh, the special education philosophy had gave impact to. So, the first one is students' criteria. So, on the students' criteria, the students with special needs, need to pass certain assessment which is determined by the Ministry of Education. So, and the students will be included in age-appropriate mainstream classroom, which means uh, the students will be placed in a classroom suitable with friends with their age. And as for the teachers, mainstream teachers were given professional development as, as well as the teacher's assistance is also crucial for the third aspect is assessment so the students with special needs will be given the same assessment as well as evaluation either curriculum or co-curriculum this means that all students will be given the same education will be will be learning the same thing there's no bias or there's no bias at all so for the fourth aspect is students placement so for students placement to me in my opinion the students placement for the special education philosophy is very strategic very structured because firstly we can see that um, the student with special needs will be approved by the committee of school special education program and after that they will be given three months of trial period and along these three months of trial period if they fail if one of them fail they will be stopped by the program and students that are that have been chosen will be encouraged to be placed with not more than five students in a classroom this is because when in a classroom when they are more than five people the teachers will have difficulties to control them because like yeah we know that students with special needs are not easy not so easy to control and sometimes out of control and lastly is uh, the students will also be given equivalent but to their achievement so for the last aspect which is teaching and learning. In teaching and learning, uh, the teachers uh, mod have modifications on teaching. Materials, 
preparation and also delivery approach and the lesson planning is also based on students achievements medical reports and also profile and for the teachers which is mainstream teachers and special education teachers they have this thing called individual education planning which is they can uh, put all their plannings in there when they in case they have any appropriate intervention needs so in that planning they can do they can jot down anything in there and lastly is mainstream and special education teachers collaborate okay as as i said uh, previously uh, in a classroom there will be uh, mainstream teachers and also special education teachers so uh, in the classroom the mainstream teachers will be teaching the main subject whereas the special education teachers will uh, give assistance to the mainstream teachers so before ending my presentation i have a hot question which is as future teachers why do you think it is so important for us to learn and understand about this topic about implications of fpk fpg and also special education philosophy towards the malaysian education system so that's all from me thank you